Hello friends, this video on anatomy of flowering plants part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Look at the next type of simple tissue that is cholenchyma. Now this is a tissue which is responsible for flexibility in plants. Okay. Now, have you ever observed, what do I mean when I say flexibility in plants? What kind of flexibility am I talking about? Have you ever seen that, uh, suppose you have a plant. What happens if you try to twist the stem? Does it immediately break? No, right? You can twist the leaf, you can twist the stem, I mean, to a some extent. Now, if you, if you do it really hard, then obviously it will break. But at least to some extent, you are able to do it. If the weather is too windy, what happens? The plant just moves left and right, but it doesn't fall down immediately until and unless the wind is really, really strong, right? So what provides that flexibility in plants? so that it can move or somebody can twist it or what exactly is there inside the plant. So that is also that flexibility in plant is also because of a tissue present in them called cholenchyma. So where do we see this cholenchyma? It is generally present below the epidermis. Epidermis is the outermost layer of the plant. So just below the outermost layer cholenchyma is present. Talking about its structure, this is how it looks like. So here, just looking at this picture, you can see that one important thing which is present here is the vacuole. So you can see quite big vacuoles are present here. Secondly, if you look at the cell wall, just look at the cell wall. The cell walls are quite thick, right? It's quite thickened at the corners. So this is the supporting and strengthening tissue. So what can we say is the function of cholenchyma? Support and strength. As I said, if the plant has strength, only then even if you twist it, it will not break. At least up to an extent, right? So cholenchyma will give support to the plant and it will also give flexibility and strength. They are elongated living cells. So parenchyma and cholenchyma both are living cells. Irregularly thickened at corners. So this is very clear from this picture. If you look at the corners, so these are the corners. So the corners are quite thickened. So what is this thickening basically? The thickened corners are made up of nothing but cellulose, hemicellulose and Pectin. So these are basically the composition of the thickened corners. Cellulose, hemicellulose, pectin. Right? Talking about the intercellular spaces, here the intercellular spaces are quite less. Now here in this picture you can see we almost don't see intercellular space. This is one cell. Again this is one cell. This is one cell. Now please do not misinterpret this white area as intercellular space. That is a vacuole. So vacuole is something which is present inside the cell. And when we say intercellular space that means an open space between two cells. So this is one cell, this entire thing. This is another cell. Do you see any empty space between the two? Not really. So the intercellular space is very small or almost no intercellular spaces, you can say. Now the question is where are they found? As I said just now, they are found below the epidermis, leaf stalks below the epidermis. So that is why you can see you can observe maximum flexibility along this area, leaf stalks. So these are the leaf stalks, right? This area basically, this stem. So you can just twist it here and there and the flexibility is there. Also in the expanded leaves, as I said, you can fold the leaves and do whatever you want with the leaf. That is also because on the leaves you have cholenchyma. So basically cholenchyma provides mechanical support to growing plant parts. It is also seen at the stem apex, that is the stem tip. Now let us brief its function. As I said, it allows bending of stems, leaves without breaking, but definitely it is not for it. It, it has an extent. I mean, if you bend it too much, then obviously the stem might break or the leaves might get torn off. So it has to happen within an extent. 
provides mechanical support to the plant. So this is about cholenchyma. Now let us talk about the third type of simple permanent tissue that is sclerenchyma. So here what is going to happen? So when we talked about parenchyma, the intercellular spaces were comparatively more. Then came cholenchyma where the intercellular spaces became negligible. Now we will see in sclerenchyma, the intercellular spaces who is not at all there. Now the lesser intercellular space you have, the more strong or more rigid the tissue is. Correct? So that is why you saw the difference between parenchyma and cholenchyma. Parenchyma is primarily used for food storage, water storage and all those stuff. Because there are intercellular spaces, so the tissue is not that strong as such. But cholenchyma being with lesser intercellular space is strong enough and therefore it provides support and flexibility to the plant. Now we will talk about sclerenchyma. So this tissue is responsible for stiffness in plants. So this is going to be the most stiff tissue out of parenchyma, cholenchyma and sclerenchyma. These are long, narrow and dead cells. Now, whereas parenchyma and cholenchyma were living cells, sclerenchyma are dead cells. Now, what do we mean by living cells and dead cells? Living cells are those inside which the entire cellular processes are happening. That means the process of cellular respiration and all those things are taking place inside each and every cell. But if it is dead, all those cellular processes have stopped taking place. So sclerenchyma are dead cells. Now since they are dead cells, so we cannot expect that these will serve any purpose of storing food or storing water or nutrients or anything like that. So it will just provide stiffness and support to the plant. So here also thickened cell walls made up of cellulose. So here it is very common if you see the red walls are so very thickened, right? Their cell walls are very, very thickened. So the more thick the cell walls are, the more strong the cell is. Impregnated with lignin. So lignin is the composition of the thick cell walls here. Simple pits are present in thickened cell walls. So even in this thick cell walls, there are simple pits which are present. Now here if you see that will be more clear. These are the thick cell walls and in between that you see some small empty space, small tunnel like structure. So that is nothing called but known as simple pit. So this is used for transmission of or exchange of materials from one cell to another. There are no intercellular spaces at all. Now for sclerenchyma there exists two forms of sclerenchyma. One is clearids and the second one is fibers. Now what are these? Now the sclerenchyma cells, that is the cells which form sclerenchyma, uh, shape wise they have got two different shapes and based on the shape of the cells we say that there are two forms of sclerenchyma. One is clearids and the other is fibers. Now let us talk about sclerids and fibers in little more detail. So what are sclerids? These are spherical or cylindrical in shape, somewhat like this. So here you can see the real picture of a sclerid. This is how it looks like under a microscope. It is somewhat spherical or sometimes cylindrical in shape, highly thickened dead walls. So the cell walls are very very thick. So here you can see this entire thing is cell wall, this entire portion is the cell wall and at the center this region is nothing but the lumen and where are the pits? Pits are somewhere here, Ch small pore like or channel like structure, These are, they are known as the pits. So this center region is the lumen and this entire thickened structure is the thick cell wall. They have a very narrow lumen, that is a small lumen. When you compare it with the thickness of the cell wall, it is really, really narrow, right? Where do we find such clerids? They are found in fruits and seeds. Seeds are generally tough and hard, right? So it is generally seen in such things. Now talking about the fibers, as the name suggests, fibers are elongated structures. 
elongated needle-shaped structures with pointed tips. Here the cell walls are have here the cells have thick walled cells and the lumen again is narrow. So how do how does a fiber look like? Fiber will look somewhat like this. Somewhat like this. So this is an elongated structure with pointed tips. So this is the cell wall. This inside structure is the pits. And this space, empty space, I'm sorry, the empty space is nothing but pits and the inside structure is nothing but lumen. So here also you have a lumen inside. Whereas in case of sclerids, this is how the lumen looks like. And then you have a really, really thick cell wall. So here in this case, this is the lumen. This is lumen and this entire thing, this entire thick wall is nothing but the cell wall, that is the thick cell wall rather. And where do we have pits? Pits are nothing but these channel-like structures. There you have pits. Clear? So the basic difference between sclerids and fibers is that sclerids are generally round in shape. Fibers are generally elongated, needle-shaped. So fibers are found in vascular tissue of flowering plants. So which are the vascular tissues of flowering plants? They are nothing but xylem and phloem. Now where are the sclerenchyma found? Where do we see sclerenchyma? They are found in hard covering of seeds and fruits as I said they, that they are going to be very stiff and very hard. So when I say hard covering of seeds and nuts what all comes to your mind? Something like coconut or walnut. So here there if you see their covering is really really hard. So sclerenchyma tissue is responsible for that stiffness. They are also present in the veins of leaves because for a leaf blade, veins are the one which make the leaf blade stronger. Otherwise, it will be like very thin and papery. But because of the presence of the veins, it is quite stiff and strong. So these are nothing but the veins. Stems around vascular bundles. So in the vascular bundles, that is in, if when you look at the internal structure of the stem or a root, you will see that the xylem and phloem are arranged in a specific fashion. Now just around the xylem and phloem are present this tissue, sclerenchyma, just to provide them additional support. Function, they provide strength to plant parts. They provide mechanical support. So support is the most important function of sclerenchyma. Now it is some, in some cases, that is in some plants, sclerenchyma fibers are present, whereas in some plants, sclerenchyma sclerides are present. So since they are just two forms, there is nothing much difference between them. So in some plants you see sclerides, whereas in some plants you see fibers. So let us, now that we have talked about all the three types of simple permanent tissue, that is parenchyma, cholenchyma and sclerenchyma, let us have a quick comparison between the three. Now when I talk about the cells of all of them, in parenchyma and cholenchyma the cells are living, whereas in sclerenchyma the cells are dead on maturity. When we talk about the intercellular spaces, it is less in parenchyma i mean we, i was telling more because i was taking talking comparatively so it is less in cholenchyma it is lesser and in sclerenchyma it is absent so now since the intercellular space decreases as we move from parenchyma to sclerenchyma therefore the rigidity also increases as we move from parenchyma to sclerenchyma 
Talking about the cell walls in parenchyma, the cell walls are very thin. Cholenchyma, they are irregularly thickened at corners. And here the composition is pectin or cellulose or hemicellulose. And in sclerenchyma, they are very, very thick with lignin. So the composition is also different. In parenchyma, the composition is cellulose. In cholenchyma, it is cellulose, hemicellulose, pectin. And in sclerenchyma, it is lignin. Function, parenchyma is the packing tissue, that is it is generally seen in the internal structure of stem, leaf, root, everywhere. So for it, its, its function also includes photosynthesis, floating in case of aquatic plants in the form of parenchyma and also storage of food, water and nutrients. So that is why it is said that parenchyma are the unspecialized cells because they are not specialized to perform one specific function. They can perform a variety of functions. Talking about cholenchyma, because their intercellular space is even lesser, they provide a lot of flexibility to the plant parts. Sclerenchyma, absolutely no intercellular spaces, plus very, very thick cell walls with impregnated with lignin. Therefore, they provide stiffness, support and protection. Right? So with this, we'll end our discussion on simple permanent tissue. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.